and welcome to another episode of Gadgets and Gizmos. My name is Gaurav Prithi and we have a power-packed episode lined up for you. And the award goes to... Hey, congratulations, man. Well done. That's it. So, Motorola, the inventor of cell phone, is back with their disruptive Moto G. This time, we have the Moto G third generation. It looks good and Sahil will tell you more about it in his review. So last week we guys promised you that we'll get you a review of the third generation Moto G and here it is. It's actually quite a cool phone. Back in 2014, Motorola reinvented the way what you would expect of a budget smartphone and it's continuing all the good work with the new Moto G. Let's find out how good this phone is. It still has a 720p display, it has a 5 inch screen which is pretty sharp, brighter, it's got punchier colours and it's got nicer viewing angles. The bigger deal out here for people who care about the display is that it's not as good as say a Mi 4i which has a full HD screen. But still for most people this will be good enough, especially considering the price. Nowadays, for 13,000 bucks, you'll get a phone which has an octa-core processor. The Moto G still, despite all this new revolution in the market, you don't get an octa-core processor. You get a pretty standard Qualcomm Snapdragon 410 quad-core chipset. You get 2 GB of RAM, you get 16 GB of internal memory and also a micro SD card slot for expansion. But in real-world usage, you'll say that the phone belies the specs. You get really good performance, it's super smooth to use. Multitasking is very fluid and overall the performance is really decent. Even in terms of gaming, the phone doesn't get warm and you'll get decent graphics. One of the coolest things about Motorola's phones is the stock Android lollipop experience. You get pure Android, unadulterated without any manufacturer skins. So you just get a fast and simple to use user interface. It's very fluid and you get some cool tricks also. For instance, if you double chop your phone, this is a gesture, the flashlight will automatically come on. And another cool feature of this phone is that it has IPX7 certification. Well, what does that mean? Well, this. It is water resistant. You can have the phone under 1 meter water for 30 minutes and according to Motorola, nothing will happen to this phone. It's actually the first phone in the segment to have this feature. I personally believe this should be a standard feature across every smartphone, including the iPhone. So now the third generation Moto G has a 13 megapixel camera with an f2.0 aperture. Motorola claims this is the same image sensor as the Google Nexus 6. Now you'd imagine this to have class leading image quality but that's not exactly the case. The image quality is decent in bright lighting like this or slightly dull lighting you'll get a lot of grains out there so which won't be really ideal for most people. Now the main problem out here is Motorola's camera app. So normal camera apps you will basically tap to focus but if I tap out here it'll actually click an image. So you have to sort of manipulate the focusing reticle out here and then you can change the exposure like this. This is not exactly obvious for every person because most phones don't operate like this. Once you get used to this, maybe you'll like it, but for most people this won't be ideal. The phone also has quite a large battery. You get a 2470 mAh battery which is quite large for the class and it lasts you a day. Say if you start your day at 8 am, it'll easily last you till around 9 pm with some charge left. So the third generation Moto G is a classic example of not judging the book by its cover. It doesn't have the fastest processor, it doesn't have the highest resolution screen and neither it has the best camera. Yet the performance is fantastic. I wouldn't classify it iPhone-like but yet it's not a backbencher. It's actually a fantastic way of experience Android in its purest form. If you had to compare it to a phone like the Xiaomi Mi 4i then I would say this is a smoother experience. Sahil is a nice boy, he's helpful, very down to earth. But Rohi says that from the last 4-5 days, he's acting kind of weird. 
I don't know what the matter is. Let's just go ahead and ask Sahil himself. What nonsense, Gaurav. I'm the same old guy. It's just that I've reached a new level of narcissism. That tends to happen sometimes, you know. When you're carrying something that's so infinitely superior than what all your colleagues are using. This is the 2015 edition of the MacBook Pro Retina display. This is the 15 inch model. So essentially the design is the same. Apple refreshed the design in 2012 and it's identical to the 2012 version. Basically the major change out here is inside, not on the outside. It's a beautiful machine. It's chiseled out of aluminium and it looks fantastic as always. Now imagine a laptop with 16 GB RAM. 512 GB of SSD storage and Intel's top of the line quad core i7 processor. Well, this one has it all. In addition to this, it has 2 GB of AMD graphics, which makes this machine a screamer. Imagine you're editing movies on Final Cut Pro, you're editing photos on Photoshop, you can even play games out here. This machine can do it all. It is faster than most desktops, most high-end desktops out there. One of the cool things about this new MacBook Pro is that the battery life is now even better. You get around 9 hours of battery on a single charge, which is just fantastic for a machine of this class. Remember, this is a top-of-the-line decked-up machine and you're still getting 9 hours of battery life. In comparison, a MacBook Air, which is much inferior in terms of hardware specifications, offers you around 12 hours of battery life. So like most Macs, this is running OS X Yosemite. It'll get an update to El Capitan later in the year and that's going to be a free upgrade. So you'll get a lot of new features out there. Another cool bit about this machine is something that you can't do on a Windows machine is that you can actually install Windows inside a virtualized environment or through bootcamp. So I have Parallels desktop out here, so I'm running Windows 10 simultaneously and it runs buttery smooth. In fact, if you think about it, this is the best Windows notebook money can buy. Microsoft, shame on you, your partners just don't make good laptops out here. If you think about it, this notebook can do anything. You can game on it, you can do professional work, and you can have a lot of fun with it. If you had to be critical out here, this is a super expensive machine at 2 lakhs. But then again, if you have the money, then you can have something really good. Make no mistake, this is the Bentley of laptops. Hello? So if I step out of the booth, you'll shoot me? <laughs> no. As you know, most of the diseases are lifestyle related and that is why these fitness bands and all those fitness apps are flooding the market. Today we have with us the Goki fitness band. Just like the other band, it also tells you your steps, your calorie burn, but there is a difference. What is the difference? Take a look. I got into running because I realized that one day running will save my life and today is the day. Today I'm wearing a Goki fitness band and just like other fitness band it also helps me track my steps, my calories and all those things. The difference lies in the fact that besides me there's a virtual trainer who's monitoring my fitness. So yes, what separates Koki from the rest of those fitness band is the fact that here you get a personal trainer who guides you along the course. It's a neat and simple band with a soft leather that is sweat proof. You get an OLED display which is always in the sleep mode and to wake it up you have to tap on the screen. The display gives you information like steps taken, run time, distance covered, calories burned and karma points. There's also an app that you need to install on your smartphone to sync your data from your band. The interface is neat, clean and very intuitive. 
some information has to be logged in like what food you ate during the day in fact you can just click the picture of the food and just log it in you can also log your water intake and you can also log in your sleep time whenever or wherever you slept Now, Gog is your regular fitness band. It just tracks your steps and calories burned and all those things. It's it doesn't really have those many sensors like the Fitbit, which would actually monitor your yoga, uh, weight training, and all those things. Just a regular fitness band, but yes, it does a job. Well, yeah. <laughs> Goki Fitness Band works well for what it offers. Fitness bands are not 100% accurate, but Goki gives you close enough numbers. Like we said, the best part is having a personal coach. You can always talk to them and they will help you and guide you and also motivate you to do better and be fit, but strictly fitness talk. Okay, I give up man plus his armpit thing. So, Goki Fitness Band is for those who are serious about their fitness because Goki not only provides you with those numbers, but it also provides you a real life trainer who helps you out with your diet, your exercise and all those things, which is great. Also, come a point because at the end, it's about giving back to society. And you're not really buying a band, you're buying subscription basically for 3 triple nine, and 3, 6 triple nine and 11 triple nine. So that's great. And if you don't want to continue, you still have the band. But yeah, that makes it more expensive. I don't think I'm going to leave man. Although, Goki says, I'm fit. I have clocked 10,000 steps. Yay. I'm after you. So, Asu's Zen Festival happened this week in India. It was quite a show and here are the highlights. And that's Zeni. It was a curious cocktail of madness, intrigue, gimmicks, misplaced celeb endorsements and, well, the plain weird. But amidst all the madness, there were a few products that genuinely piqued our interest. Like the Zenfone 2 Deluxe. So ASUS has just launched the Zenfone 2 Deluxe and essentially it's an upgrade over the Zenfone 2. You get this new design out here, you get a nicer screen which has better contrast, it's slightly brighter. Overall it's basically the same phone, you get the same Intel quad core processor, it's also a phone with 4 GB of RAM. It's available in 64 GB and 128 GB variants. I'm the first owner of this beautiful Zenfone set. The Zenfone Selfie, or as Asus would have you believe, Sonakshi Sinha's favorite phone, is another interesting device. The Selfie is powered by a Snapdragon 615 processor with an Adreno 405 GPU and 3 GB of RAM. The real story here, as the name suggests, are the dual 13 megapixel cameras on the front and the back of the phone. Both cameras have a f2.0 aperture and tout various ASUS improvements for the camera software. From the little time we spent with it, we came away with mixed feelings. We will have to test it out to make up our minds though. The selfie has been priced at Rs 15,999. No, the ASUS Zenfone 2 laser will not vaporize people. Although we kind of wish we had those powers when they introduced us to Zenny. Moving on. The Zenfone 2 laser comes in three variations in India. For Rs 9,999, you get a Snapdragon 410 with 2 GB of RAM. And for 13,999, you get a Snapdragon 615 with 3 GB of RAM. And for 17,999, you get a version with a full HD screen. The big deal here is the camera. 13 megapixel rear shooter features laser autofocus to help the camera focus on subjects faster. And in our experience, it was quite decent. Now let's head back to Gaurav and continue on with the show. Take it away, Johnny. Mm -hmm. Oof. So yeah, I've just moved to 4G and I don't know how to activate it, but I will figure it out. So yes, 3G was dying and in today's age you need data plans on the go. So I moved to 4G in the hope that finally I will get 3G speed. But how to activate it? Well in Delhi, Airtel is the only operator providing a 4G network. To begin with, you need to order a 4G SIM. Then you need to activate your new SIM. You need to send an SMS to Airtel from your old SIM 
to activate the new one. Once your phone loses its network, then you insert the new SIM to activate 4G. Now this could take between 15 minutes to a couple of hours depending on the network conditions. You know, I am really excited about 4G because 4G is fast, really fast, but how fast? When you upgrade from 3G to 4G, you'd expect the speeds to go up. As a bare minimum, you'd expect your YouTube videos to stream without any buffering. And mostly when you're getting the 4G LTE signal on your phone, then you'll get speeds that are much superior to that of 3G. But the thing is that you won't get those speeds everywhere. Even in Delhi, Airtel claims the network is there throughout the city, but it's not there. For instance, when I'm at work in Noida, I wouldn't even get 3G, leave alone 4G. At home, I get a consistent 4G signal. Now, the reason why I'm switching from 3G to 4G is because lately there is something wrong with 3G. Like from, for example, I listen to music online and I'm not able to stream music continuously. One song and it breaks and then one more song. So yeah, I don't know what's going on. Well, it's true. Of late, the 3G experience has been poorer. A lot of the telcos are actually transitioning the 3G spectrum to 4G. Then there's also the problem of the lack of towers. They are also responsible for those pesky, persistent call drops. However, there's some good news out here. You can actually get a 4G connection for as much as what you were getting 3G for. But still, the fact of the matter is, if you have subscribed for 4G, you should get 4G through and through consistently. It shouldn't be sporadic, you shouldn't get call drops and you should get good network quality. Now someone told Nishant that he has a really bad hairstyle but he was okay with it until someone said that his new Apple Watch is useless in India. That was the time when he decided to find out about these apps that are available in India right now for his smartwatch and also answer the question whether smartwatches would become the extension of your smartphone. Smartwatches and smart bands have become a household name today and that can be seen by the hyperactive rat race to produce such products between the OEMs. But the big question is can a smartwatch really become an extension of your smartphone? And to check that out, I have the Apple Watch with me today. First app is Shazam. The reason why I'm mentioning about this app is because I'm tired and have time and again been embarrassed to flip out my phone just to discover the name of the music. But thanks to Apple Watch, I just have to tap on the app on my watch and I can discover the music playing around me easily. Cool me down. I'm so <laughs> now hailing a taxi through an app is convenient but at times it can be a tedious process. On my Apple Watch, I just tap on the app and it straight away tells me how much time it will take for the nearest cab to reach me. Quite sleek I say. We all have those days where we forget to do our daily chores. But fret not, because there's an app just for that. Wonderlist is an Apple Watch app that lets you mark down all your tasks under various categories, be it groceries, medicines or other things that you need to buy. And it's even simpler to use, because once you do those chores and tasks, you can strike them off and by the end of the day, you'll definitely feel much more organized. Next app is WeChat. So now you can give the tedious task of taking out your smartphone from your pocket a miss and start chatting with your friends straight up. And yes, all your favorite contacts will be shown on the smartwatch app as well. So you can easily get in touch with your favorite peeps at any time you want. Next up is Zomato. Yes, Zomato is also here on your Apple smartwatch. So be it breakfast, lunch or dinner, you can just browse through these categories and can also use the maps to reach the location. Pretty useful indeed. But it would be great if Zomato takes out the smartwatch app for its new app Zomato Delivery. Imagine ordering food from your wrist. Now that would be a bliss indeed. And last but not the least, we have 7, an app for the fitness enthusiast. This app has become immensely popular because of its quick 7 minute workout and with the smartwatch app it becomes much easier to use. With this app you are relieved from the hassle of keeping your phone in your hands or in front of your eyes while working out. Quick workouts have now become even quicker. So we've listed down some really cool and useful apps that show you the potential of Apple Watch. But it's just a matter of time before more developers come and show much more useful apps and make the Apple Watch more appealing. 
the biggest news this week was government deciding to ban porn. Yes, because of that news, there were a few concerned faces, but fret not, just 857 websites and it's an ocean out there. So besides that, there were plenty of other things that happened in the tech world and here is a look. So this week, government decided to ban porn by blocking 857 porn websites. This was met with huge outrage as people accused government of moral policing and infringing on personal freedom. Government has lifted the blockade and has said that they will continue to censor sites promoting child pornography. Government has imposed total penalty of 10.8 crores on telecom operators for exceeding prescribed electronic frequency limits, Telecom Minister Ravi Shankar Prasad said in a written reply to Rajya Sabha this Friday. According to the statement, the maximum penalty of 2.15 crores was imposed on Bharti Airtel, followed by 1.8 crores on Vodafone. 1.65 crores on Reliance and 1.45 crores on Tata Teleservices. Tesla Motors has said that it has sent software patch to address security flaws in the Tesla Model S sedan that could allow hackers to take control of the vehicle. Cybersecurity researchers said that they had taken control of Model S and turned it off at low speed, one of six significant flaws they found that could allow hackers to take control of the vehicle. Tesla confirmed elements of the story and said that it has already issued a software patch to the owners. Cyber criminals from countries like Pakistan, China, Bangladesh and the US are mostly involved in hacking and launching attacks on computer networks of Indian organization. The parliament was informed about this by Minister of Communication and IT Ravi Shankar Prasad. He said that attackers are compromising computer systems in different parts of the world and are using masquerading techniques and hidden servers to hide the identity of actual systems from which the attacks are launched. All right, with that is wrap. We hope you enjoyed watching our episodes. If you want to know anything about technology, just go to our website, nedra.in, uh, to our tech section. And we'll be back next week. I know what.